What's up guys, Lego here with Dyna Demos, and I know it's been a while since you see me in a garage, but I promised you guys I'd be back, and finally here we are doing maintenance, and I'm not just running my suck on my motorcycle. So today I'm going to be doing a pretty popular uh, install that I think a lot of you guys will be interested in, but I'm going to be doing a forward to mid control swap on this bike. Uh, a lot of people are interested in going from forward to mids, uh, one for the look, also, a lot of guys like the mid controls because it provides better handling. So, the so uh, the owner of this bike, he hit me up on Instagram and he was interested in doing the swap. And I told him, hey man, I'll do it for free because I need to make a video of it. So that's where we're at right now. He just dropped off his bike this morning and now I'm going to get started on this install. So please. If you're interested, stay tuned. Also, if you like the video and I did a good job, please make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps us get us out there and uh, continuing to provide you guys with some awesome content and popular installs and also riding videos. But let's get started. First thing I'm gonna go over is everything you need if you're going from a forward to a mid control swap. All right, guys, so as promised, the first thing I'm gonna do is go over all of the parts that you need. The first thing I'm gonna go over right here, you have your gasket. What this does is this sandwiches your outer to your inner primary. So if you're running an old bike, I do recommend getting one of these just so you don't run into the issue of putting everything together and then your gasket's bad and now it's leaking. So Harley's always gonna recommend that you replace this but if you have a newer bike, it may not be necessary. So the next thing that you're gonna wanna pick up if you're going from forward to mids is the actual mounts itself. So right here, we have straight mid mounts. Now, the reason I'm saying straight mids is these are just regular mids. Uh, you have another option of going with further forward mids, which are gonna put it, I can't remember if it's an inch to an inch and a half further forward than regular mids, but these ones are your straight mid mounts. So you're also gonna need those. Right here, you have your brake rods. So if you're going from if you're going from forwards to mids, you're definitely going to need to pick one of these guys up. What this does is when you press your your uh, brake lever, this right here actually uh, transfers that to your rear brake and allows you to uh, stop using your rear brake. So you're going to need to pick one of these up, and then you have your shift lever. Uh, you're definitely going to need one of these. Uh, the difference between the further forward one and the straight mids one is going to be that difference of an uh, inch to an inch and a half. So depending on which ones you go with, you definitely will need uh, one of these arms. Um, as far as your brake lever goes, you will also need to pick up a snap ring. And this actually holds the uh, brake lever onto the mount. So you're definitely going to need one of those. And a lot of people forget about this guy right here. So this goes in between the mount and the brake lever, and this takes up that extra space. If you don't have this right here, you're, uh, you're gonna have a lot of movement between your uh, brake lever and your mount, and it's gonna allow the snap ring to pop off. So make sure you pick up this guy too. Uh, I forget what the part number is for that, so you're gonna have to look that up yourself. So some other stuff you're gonna need to pick up is your actual uh, mid control linkage. Uh, this one is a bunking. This is a good option. I myself have an alloy art one, but you're gonna need to pick one of these up. You have your shifter shaft. You're definitely gonna need one of those. Uh, the difference between forward controls and mid controls is this shaft right here is gonna go through your outer primary. So you need to pick one of these up. There's the part number right there so you can see it. So the next thing you're gonna need to grab is this shift lever. So there's the part number right there. This one's for a black one. Um, this on forward controls is like an inch taller. So the so it's not gonna look correct and your bike's gonna shift funny if you leave the regular one on. So make sure that you pick one of these up for, for mids, don't forget that. Um, then right here we have, this is for your inner primary. Um, you're going to make sure you need to make sure that you pick one of these up 
And then we also have uh, new bolts with uh, new gaskets or new O-rings on. This holds your inner primary onto the actual bike. And then he's got another gasket in here. And this one is just for your uh, little five point cover um, on your outer primary. So make sure you pick that up as well. And then we got some oil here because we're gonna take off the primary. We need at least one quart. Make sure you pick that up as well. Doesn't matter whatever oil you wanna go with. And then right here, this is important. You need the tower gasket. So what the tower gasket does is it, what the tower gasket does is it sandwiches in between your inner and your outer primary, which I'll show you guys on the install. If you don't get this right here, it's gonna it's gonna leak from where your uh, shift lever goes. All right, I accidentally did that one time. I didn't put this on, and then my bike leaked. Which I'll show you guys when I install this. This little clevis pin right here goes through your brake rod, which attaches to your brake lever. You're gonna need one of these as well as uh, I'm not even sure what you call this, but this just goes through the clevis pin and make sure. And it ensures that your uh, brake lever, your brake rod doesn't slip off your brake lever. So you're going to need one of those. Or you could just use a cotter pin. It doesn't even matter. Um, but yeah, those are all the parts that you should need to do a forward to mid control swap. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is drain the oil. I'm an idiot. I forgot I don't have anything to catch the oil at my new garage. So I'm using this makeshift drawer. Uh, don't be an idiot like me. Go get something to properly catch the oil. Right, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the five point cover. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the forward mount. But before I do that, I want to take off the pegs. I want to take off the toe peg. I want to disconnect everything because I found once you actually get the mount off the bike, it's extremely difficult to like break torque on your uh, pegs and stuff like that. So I like to do that while it's still on the bike. And then I'll take the actual mount off and I'm going to disconnect the, the uh, forward controls linkage too. So I'm going to do all that right now. All right, in order to get this linkage off, you actually have to hold the jam nut back here while breaking torque on the nut. And it's as simple as that. And I already have the mount loosened up. That's why this is wiggling a bunch. Um, but after this, I'm gonna take the mount off itself. So boom, disconnected. What I'm gonna do now, Put that back there so I don't lose any of the hardware. But now I'm just gonna take the mount off itself. I already loosened it up. Look at that, forward mounts off, perfect. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is take off the outer primary. So there are four long bolts and the rest are short. You can't mess it up because the four long bolts go in the front. So I'm gonna take those out now. You guys just seen me pull the outer primary, so I got that off. You guys seen some excess oil drained off. That's always gonna happen, so make sure you put something underneath here uh, to catch that excess oil. So now that we got the outer primary off, uh, I'm gonna take off the clutch hub, and then I'm also gonna have to take the forward compensator off. 
Um, all of this is gonna have to come out because your inner primary needs to get pulled off in order to uh, fully do this uh, mid swap. So uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that now. So in order to add slack to the clutch, uh, all you need to do is brake torque on this jam nut and then you are going to shorten your clutch cable and then what that is going to do is it's going to loosen up your clutch. So you want slack in this clutch for when you're actually going to pull the clutch up. So make sure you got slack and then I'm gonna pull the clutch. So the last thing that we did was we added slack to the clutch. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brake torque on this jam nut right here, which I've already done. So once I brake torque on that jam nut, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this retaining ring in here. Um, and in order to do that, you're going to need a pretty good set of snap ring pliers. I don't have the best snap ring pliers, but I should be able to make these work. So once you remove the retaining ring, you can also remove the retaining plate. So once that is all removed, now the clutch hub nut is exposed. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to take off the chain tensioner. Uh, once we get the chain tensioner off, I'm going to brake torque on the clutch hub and then the compensator in that order. So we're gonna do that now. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove this chain tensioner. So before you do that, what you wanna do is you wanna put a zip tie on it and what that's going to do is it's going to keep it compressed so later on when you go to install it it will not be super difficult All right, so once you have your zip tie on your chain tensioner, now you can take out the bolts and not have to be worried about this thing springing open and then it being extremely difficult to uh, reinstall it. So with your chain tensioner, one good thing to uh, check this for is wear once you get it removed because you don't look inside your inner primary a lot. So, Always check up here for uh, wear. Uh, if this thing's getting worn all the way through, it's gonna start wearing down your uh, your chain. And then once that happens, this thing's gonna freaking say hello to you and it's gonna shoot through your primary. So always make sure you check this for wear whenever you remove it. So now that I got the chain tension off, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break torque on the clutch hub. So this nut inside here is a 30 millimeter and it's also reverse threaded. So what that means is you're gonna have to go clockwise to break torque, and then you're gonna need some sort of locking tool. So I'll show you guys my locking tool uh, after I break torque on this and after I get it off. Um, and the reason you're gonna need that is if you don't have a locking tool, this is just gonna free spin when you're trying to take it off. And there we have it, your clutch hub nut. So I'm gonna barely just thread this on just so it doesn't come off when I'm breaking torque on the compensator. So this is the locking tool that I was talking about. You can get it on Amazon. It's fairly cheap. I think it's not even $10, but you can also use a metal bar uh, I prefer this. It's just really hard plastic because uh, I don't want to. I don't want metal on metal when I'm breaking torque. I feel like that's going to end up damaging something. So I'll link this in the description so you guys can go and pick this up. The next thing I'm going to break torque on is the compensator. So this one isn't reverse threaded and it is a 21 millimeter socket. 
and then make sure you're using your locking tool. Otherwise, this thing is just gonna free spin. I already broke torque, so it's gonna come off easy. So what I can do now is remove my locking tool and I can remove this by hand. I can remove my clutch hub nut. Once all that is removed, I can remove this as an assembly. All right, guys, so you guys seen me pull out the entire clutch hub and the Ford compensator as an assembly. So I got that pulled out. The next thing that I did was I broke torque on these five bolts right here that hold your inner primary onto uh, your engine. So I'm gonna take out those five bolts. The next thing I'm gonna do is I gotta break torque on two bolts behind here that hold your starter onto uh, your inner primary. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. And I'll show you guys how I do that on the opposite side. So there's probably a way easier way to do this, but I like to make things extremely difficult. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And it involves removing the battery. All right, guys. So now that the piece that holds your battery is removed, now you guys will be able to see the bolts that I'm talking about. So you have one Allen key bolt right here. And then you have one that's tucked away back here. Pretty hard to see. But those two Allen key bolts hold your starter onto your inner primary. So I'm gonna remove those two bolts right now. It's gonna be pretty hard to show. So I'm not really gonna try to uh, show me loosening them. But those are the two bolts that I'm gonna take out next. And then I'm gonna reinstall all of this stuff after I put the inner primary back on. So now that the two bolts are removed on the opposite side, all I have to do is press on the starter and it should pop right out. There we go. Now that that's popped out, I can remove these five bolts, which I already broke torque on. And this is all that's holding your inner primary onto your bike still. Check that out, removed, boom. So if you guys look, you can see the difference between the forward control shifter arm and the mid control shifter arm. It's about an inch taller. So that's the reason you gotta get a new one of these. Otherwise, your, uh, your shift linkage is gonna look really funny. Like it still works, but it looks weird. So that's why you gotta get one of these guys. Make sure you use torque strut and tighten down the Allen key. All right, since I got the inner primary off, it's always a good idea if you're uncertain, if you need new gaskets to just go out and get new gaskets because it's better to spend the extra money and not have a leak than not spend the extra money and then have to rip it all apart because you want it to be cheap. So uh, the guy who brought the bike over, he ended up buying a new inner primary gasket. So after you take these gaskets off, what you wanna make sure is that when you're putting the new gasket on, that the surface is clean. So after I take a gasket off, I always clean the surface and then install the new gasket. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Once the surface is clean, you can install your new gasket and you can't install these incorrectly because they have guide pins that won't allow you to install this incorrectly. So boom, new gasket on no leak from there so you don't need to worry about that all right so the next thing you want to do is you want to replace this oil seal so i already broke it loose but how i broke it loose i'll show you so they make special tools that you can get in order to do this but really all you need is an open end wrench and something to uh, pry with so i put this here i'm using the rag so i don't damage it and then all i did was i pried up on it until it came loose so that it's as simple as that uh, in order to get that seal out. Now, in order to get the new one in, 
all you have to do is press it in and it's really easy. Um, you want to make sure that there's a little bit of oil on it. All right, guys. So the last gasket that I'm going to replace on this is going to be the gasket for the starter. So uh, I'm just going to throw that on there. Uh, some people call it a gasket. Some people call it an O-ring. So that's the last gasket I'm going to replace before I put on the inner primary. All right, guys. So now that I've replaced the gasket for the forward side, I've replaced the gasket for the starter. I installed the shifter arm as well as installing the gasket for the inner primary. The last thing that I did was I took the shifter shaft and I put it through the inner primary um, because once you install this, you're not gonna be able to get it through. So I threw that on, I made sure all the surfaces were clean and now I'm ready to throw this guy on. Now it might take a second to line everything up, but once you do, the guide pins on the back, you can only install this one way. So it should be installed correctly. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to clean everything up in here and then I'm going to install the five bolts that actually secure it on and then the starter on the opposite side. Now, these bolts, they come with a little gasket. So these are supposed to be one time use bolts. The guy who dropped the bike off, he did buy new bolts. Do with that information as you want. Um, I'm going to throw these on because he has them, but I also have reused the same hardware as long as the gasket was good on the bolt. So it has already got thread lock on it, so I'm not gonna worry about that, but I am gonna make sure I torque these down in the correct sequence, and I'll show you guys that. So make sure you throw on some Loctite when you're reinstalling these bolts. Just a dab will do you. All right, so now that those are reinstalled, I'm gonna reinstall this battery box. All right guys, so the next thing I'm gonna do is torque the inner primary bolts. Um, and these have to go in a special sequence. So I'm gonna do that now. So it's gonna go one, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna torque it 26 to 28 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go with the higher side of 28. So I'm gonna do that now. All right guys, extremely important. This right here is the tower gasket. Do not forget to throw this guy on, otherwise your shift shaft will leak and you're going to have a bad day. Alright guys, so the next thing I'm going to install is the compensator, the clutch hub, and your primary chain, all as an assembly. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. Alright guys, so the next thing that we're going to do now that this is all installed is I'm going to install the compensator bolt. Now, in order to install this bolt, I'm going to have to use my primary locking device. Again, I'm using a 21 millimeter socket and I'm gonna to torque this to 100 foot-pounds. After I torque that to 100 foot-pounds, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna back it off half a turn. So once I've backed that off half a turn, I'm gonna finish it off with a final torque of 175 foot-pounds. So I'm installing the clutch hub nut. I wanna make sure I use some high strength thread lock. Now remember this is reverse threaded, so it's gonna be lefty tidy, righty loosey. I know it's weird, but that's how they made it. So again, I installed my primary locking device and now I'm gonna to torque this to 80 foot pounds. Once that's torqued, I'm just gonna back this off, just enough to get the locking device out. And now I'm gonna install the chain tensioner. When installing this, we wanna make sure that we use our thread lock on both of our bolts. 
and we want to make sure we still have that zip tie on. Otherwise, it's going to be extremely hard to install. So I'm going to torque these two bolts to 24 foot pounds. So the next thing I'm going to install is this retaining plate. So all you do is put it in there and make sure the word out faces out. And now that's installed, I can install the retaining ring. All right, guys, after the retaining plate and the retaining ring are installed, the next thing I need to do is adjust this. So how you adjust it, um, you're going to have a lot of free play. So what you want to do is you want to spin it until it's lightly seated. So I go hand tight and then you're going to use an Allen key and you're going to use this to go a half to a full turn off. So I'm going to do a half. So after it's a half, what you're going to do is you're going to run the jam nut down and then you are going to tighten the jam nut. So once that's adjusted, you're gonna pump your lever three times and then you're gonna adjust your clutch cable. So the way that you do that is we're gonna take out the slack on our clutch lever. Once you get it to where you wanna get it, all you need to do is tighten down your jam nut. I almost forgot. Make sure you install that new gasket if you have one. Now I'm gonna install the outer primary. So once you get it on, uh, this was kind of a pain just because this mid, sh mid shift shaft has never been through the outer primary, so it's pretty tight. So it was being kind of a pain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all the bolts in and I'm gonna thread them down in order to tighten this outer primary on there. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, so what I did was I installed all the rest of the bolts and I tightened them down. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the drain plug and this kit came with a new O-ring so it's always a good idea to put a new one on. You wanna make sure you throw on your new gasket. Now I've came across two different types of gasket. You got these rubber ones and then you also got paper ones. Doesn't matter which one you use, just make sure you got your gasket. All right guys, so uh, last thing I did was I installed all these bolts and then I installed the five point cover and then I serviced it up and I made sure that there was no leaks because you don't wanna continue forward if you got leaks because then obviously you did something wrong, but there's no leaks, so I'm gonna continue on. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install uh, your mounting hardware for the mid control. So instead of the mid, the forwards all the way up here, you install the mids back here. So I'm gonna do that now. All right guys, so I put on the pegs, I put on the shifter arm, and I also put on the shift linkage. So uh, I was just doing all that. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. There's plenty of videos if you have any questions on how to install any of that. Um, so I got it all on and I'll just I'll adjust the shifter arm as needed, as well as the toe peg um, as needed, but I wanna sit on the bike before I start making adjustments to those. So there it is, and I'm gonna start on the other side now. All right guys, the fun part. So what I'm gonna do on this side is I'm gonna brake torque on the toe peg, I'm gonna drop the brake rod lever, and then I'm gonna take off the mount. So that's what I'm gonna do first. Alright guys, 
so what I've learned from the past is it's a lot easier to do this side if you just remove the exhaust. So that's what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna remove the exhaust just so I don't even have to mess with it and this side's gonna go on a lot easier. So I'm gonna do that now. All right guys, so I went to go remove the exhaust but I think it's gonna be a pain to remove the exhaust. So what I did was I loosened it up and I think I have enough clearance now to where it's not gonna be too difficult. So I'm just gonna leave the exhaust on but I need to take off this forward control brake lever rod. You see how long it is? It goes all the way to the forward side of your bike. Um, we're gonna replace this with the mid one and you guys will be able to see the difference in a second. So in order to do that, all I have to do is loosen the jam nut while holding on to the front side of your uh, brake. Um, I'm just gonna call it manifold, sure. So this right here is gonna adjust the height of your brake lever. So the farther it goes in, the higher it's gonna be. So I do it like a little bit more than halfway. And then I tighten that down, but we'll uh, check it once we actually get the mount and the brake lever on. All right guys, so their next step is gonna be installing the mount along with the brake lever. So. It's really simple, um, but you can mess it up. So if you guys look in here, you see that piece that I showed you earlier, you're gonna wanna make sure that you use that. If you don't, it's gonna allow all, too much free play. And then what's gonna happen is your snap ring is gonna pop off. So now that I have this, I'm gonna put some Loctite on the bolts and then I'm going to um, install the brake lever rod through here along with the clevis pin and then the I'm just gonna call it a cotter pin on the back uh, so your brake rod doesn't come free from um, your brake lever. So I'm gonna do that now. And I have had to drill this out a little bit in order to get the clevis pin through. So we're gonna see, yep, this one doesn't fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill it out a little bit and then it'll fit. All right. Now that I got that hole drilled out a little bit, the clevis pin will go in freely. So the way this works is you put the you put the brake lever rod through here, you put the brake lever rod through here, you put the clevis pin through, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the retainer on the back so this doesn't fall off. So it's kind of hard to show, but that's what I'm doing along with mounting the actual uh, mount so it can't go free, but you see, I have to actually thread it through. That's why I loosen the exhaust up. So I'm gonna do all that now. I know it's pretty hard to tell, but I got the retainer on the through the brake lever rod through the brake lever so that's all good and you guys will see in a second after I install this uh, hardware for the actual mounts that your uh, brake lever is uh, sitting where it should be. So it looks pretty good and you guys can see the brake the brake lever is sitting uh, pretty good right now, so I know that we have it adjusted properly. All right, guys, so finished product. Uh, I finished installing the shift linkage. Um, that's really easy to install. I tightened up the uh, peg, um, made sure to tighten up the shifter arm. And then I made sure it still wasn't leaking and we're good on that side. On the opposite side, I'm not working with much room here. Uh, I finished tightening up the exhaust. I got the mount installed with the brake lever and that was it. So on this one, I'm done. I'm gonna take it for a quick rip, make sure nothing falls apart, make sure it's not leaking. And I'm gonna call this one good. All right guys, that's gonna do it for the video. Hopefully it helped you out. And if it did, please make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps us uh, get our name out there and it keeps us motivated to keep bringing you guys some awesome videos and some pop popular installs. 
Um, there will be more videos to come. Uh, I got some things planned for my bike, so please stay tuned for that. And uh, as always, Lego here with Down and Demos. I'm out.